Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. Thanks for watching today. I wanted to do my very first purchase or pass. I hope this sort of uh, video is interesting to you. I love watching these because I like to see what other people are interested in, why they're interested in it, and then the decision process behind yay or nay, or maybe we'll see. If you haven't already, would you please subscribe to my channel? If you are already subscribed, thank you so much, and let's get into this. All right, so I have my phone here and I have Trend Moods Instagram page up because I feel like she has like her finger on the pulse of what's new, what's coming, and I've kind of made a list of things that I'm interested in. The first one is from Glow Recipe. This is one I'm definitely gonna purchase. May not be immediately. I need to work through some of the products I already have, but this is my yes, wanna try, very untrusted. And this is from Glow Recipe. This is their Avocado Melt Sleeping Mask. It looks really, really interesting. There are some things about this. I've already tried both of their watermelon products or watermelon glow and their pink juice. I like both of those. I think the pink juice is better for summertime for me, but I really like their sleeping mask, their watermelon one. Smells great, feels great, really helps my skin get that glowy, exfoliated overnight look. This here says it has polyhydroxy acids, overnight hydration, and also has honey in it. I love honey in skin products. It's really great. But one of the things that kind of really pulled me in, aside from it being avocado, is also the fact that it's pillow proof. Because so many of my sleeping masks that I wear at night sometimes are still tacky by the time I get to bed and I feel like I'm stuck to my pillowcase and I don't want that. So this is supposed to be pillow proof. It looks very interesting and it's $45. Very intrigued. Another product that I'm definitely interested in and I want to see if I can find at my local drugstore is from e.l.f. This is their metallic flare highlighters. It's multi-dimensional high luster glow powder. They have four shades. They're supposed to be buttery and soft and a high shimmer formula. And for $6, I really don't think that you can go wrong. And I feel like they have a wide variety of shades that are gonna meet the needs of a wide variety of skin tones. The ones I would probably go for would be the white gold or the rose gold, but I wanna see them in person before I decide. And $6, it's such a great price. One that I definitely know I'm gonna buy, I may have already purchased it by the time this goes up. I've been eyeing this palette since the first time I saw it sneak peeked. It's from Too Faced, it's their Pretty Rich Eyeshadow Palette. Okay, so last year, was it the beginning of January this year? I'm not sure. When their Diamond Glow highlighter came out and it came out in that beautiful pink package that looked like an old fashioned jewelry case, I was just like, ah, swoon gorgeousness. But I realized that that highlighter had more green and blue ship to it, and it's not the sort of highlighter that I prefer. So I said no to that highlighter. But then when I realized they were coming out with an entire Pretty Rich line, I was like ah, drooling, just chomping at the bit, couldn't wait. And when I saw the inside of this eyeshadow palette, I feel like I just swooned. It was gorgeous. So there are four shades in this palette that are a pressed gel glitter. Very intrigued by that because although I like glitter only on my eyes, I love a glitter on my eyes. But I need the type of glitter that is not gonna betray me and fall down below because my under eyes, especially in the winter time, are dry. They've got some wrinkles. They don't need any more emphasis on the underside of my eye with the dark circles and the wrinkles. Like, no, 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 no. Look, all of your attention goes right here on my lid. And these pressed glitters look really interesting. They also have some beautiful mattes and metallics. And I like that this whole palette leans a little bit on the cool side. I like that a lot. So cannot wait to get my fingers in that, play with it, see what it looks like on the eyes. The last thing that I'm definitely interested in and I want to see, see if there is a shade that will fit me, is new from L'Oreal. It says, finally available in the US. I don't know where else they were showing it, maybe in Europe, but we didn't have it here, but it's finally here and it's the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear 24 Hour Foundation. So it's supposed to provide long wear coverage, like 24 hours worth of coverage, we'll see, but it's supposed to also be medium to full coverage. So it's breathable, it's comfortable. It has three oil absorbers that resist sweat, water, and transfer, comes in 30 shades. Now, when I looked at this initially, I thought, oh, 30 shades, drugstore, that's pretty good. Would like to see a few more shades, but I don't feel like there is a very reasonable distribution. I still feel like most of these shades are sadly in the fair to light skin tone, maybe light medium, not medium, but light medium. <laughs> so I feel like more than half of them fit people with lighter skin tones. 
and then less than half of them fit people with medium to deep skin tone. So I would definitely like to see more of a shade for everyone at the drugstore. I know that that is more of the trend. 30 is better than the 12 or the 18 they used to bring out, but still let's make sure everybody can try it. But I think the formula sounds interesting. And since L'Oreal is the parent company of Lancome and some of my favorite all-time foundations have been Lancome products, even ones they discontinued and no longer make. <sighs> Moment of silence and a tear. <laughs> but they're definitely, I like trying out L'Oreal products because I feel like sometimes we pass on old formulas to the drugstore. We'll see. Okay, on to my maybe list. The first one, oh my goodness, it looks so pretty and it totally pulled me in. It is from ColourPop and it's the collaboration with I Am Becky G. Now, there's a couple of reasons here why I like this. Part of it is just the colors. Oh, it's got a nice mix. You remember the ones that they, those nine pan palettes that ColourPop put out this summer, the Solimar? Um, the mod had a lot of cool tones, blues, kind of greens, and then they had some warm pops in there. And that just kept calling my name, calling my name, and I never got it. And I was like, ah. And I feel like this Salvaje packet uh, eyeshadow palette here really does kind of hit those same types of notes with some really interesting twists, like the red in there beautiful there's a lot of bronze gold and then some definitely darker colors i really like this and i think that's really what called me in so the names in here also are really cute um like corona and luna cafecito estrella those sorts of things um you may not know this about me but i am half mexican my mother is mexican and my mom's side of the family I grew up very much with my Mexican grandparents um, and there is that very strong Latino influence in my family. I don't look it. <laughs> um, I am the only really fair skinned person on my mom's side of the family, but I love my Mexican culture and that side of my family with all of my heart. And so that's part of the reason this kind of pulled me in because I was like, ooh, ooh, I like it. They even have, um, an ultra satin lip that I'm thinking about. It's called Dirty Peach. It's, well, it's called Mija, but the shade is Dirty Peach. And I might just get it because it's called Mija, which is Spanish for my daughter. <laughs> but I used to get called Mija and Mijita like my entire childhood from my mom, from my grandma, from my grandpa, um, even from my uncles and aunts. Everybody calls, you know, Mija, Mijo, my little girl, my little boy. Anyway, I really love that. And it might, I might just get it even though I don't wear it just because it's, that's the name. Isn't that terrible? But sometimes you have those emotional attachments to things. I really like this whole collection here. I'm really keeping an eye though on that Salvaje eyeshadow palette. That's on my maybe list. There is another eyeshadow palette I'm keeping an eye on. Oh, and I really shouldn't be because this lady does not need any more eyeshadow, but it's from NARS. This is their new Ignite eyeshadow palette. It has 12 shades. It's $59. And it is beautiful. And what I love most about this is the fact that it's cool leaning. It has some beautiful midtown neutrally, mid-toned neutrally browns, but the rest of it is kind of pinky purple and it looks beautiful. The swatches, it looks like it would give really light and pretty looks on the eyes. I really, really like this. But I'm the sort of person that I'm probably not going to pay $59 for it. I'll try and see if I can get it with a 20% off from Ulta or Sephora, whoever sends me one first. That's definitely on my maybe list, but I definitely want to go and try it, put my fingers in it and go, hmm, what do you like? Another one that kind of caught my eye, and I don't know, this is maybe leaning towards maybe, maybe not, and it all depends. But it's a new Tardis Pro Cheek Palette. And there are six colors. There are four blushes, one bronzer, one highlight. And they say the bronzer is like customizable. I'm like, how do you customize it? And I think they're wanting you to mix it with other shades in the palette, but I don't know. So they look pretty. Truth is I already have a couple of Tarte face palettes. I do like the Tarte blushes. I do have a whole palette of uh, Tarte Amazonian Clay. And I kind of feel like maybe I don't need it. Did I just talk myself out of it? I might have. <laughs> But it looks pretty and it looks interesting. Let me know, does this sort of thing appeal to you? From there, there's an eyeshadow palette from Zueva. And I don't have anything at all from Zueva. And this one looks really pretty. This is their Eclectic Eyes eyeshadow palette. It leans a little bit more on the cool side. It has some grays, some blues. It has some neutrally browns in there too. And I think it could make some really pretty looks. But it really kind of like, ooh, 
intrigued me. I was like, wow, I want to know more. And maybe since this is not one that I could walk into a store and swatch and play with, maybe it's one that I order and we see what we think. But it's definitely on my maybe list. Another release, and this is for spring, it's from MAC and it's part of their Fleur Reel. <laughs> that was the hashtag Fleur Reel. And it's uh, their spring 2019. Let me find it. And basically it's the pan. And isn't it stupid that I'm attracted to something because of the impression on the pan when they press it? It looks so gorgeous. Flowers, flower petals, it's a soft pink, and, and the packaging, it looks so cute. I normally don't buy a lot of MAC products, and it, a lot of it is, it just never really calls to me, but this one was like, ooh, yes. It looks gorgeous. White packaging with the flower petals on the actual front of the packaging, and then the inside the pan itself is gorgeous. I don't know. This is this is why I said maybe I, mm, I don't really need another blush, but this one looks really pretty. So we'll see. But we won't know until January. There is a, a new collection from Guerlain. And Guerlain is one of the products that, like the brands that I would like to try more of in 2019. And their new spring collection looks very interesting. This is a sneak peek. This is their Morning Love collection. They have three things in this collection. They have a Meteorites highlighter, a pressed Meteorites highlighter. I've had the Meteorites pearls before. Intriguing. This highlighter looks gorgeous. It leans more on the pinky side. Definitely interested in that. Not interested in this uh, eyeshadow kind of eyebrow palette. And I don't know how they say brows for this. I don't know, we'll have to see. But it definitely doesn't look like something that would terribly interest me, so probably no on that. But those Kiss Kiss lipsticks, there are some neutral shades and kind of that corally tone that really caught my eye. I have not tried any other lipstick from Guerlain other than this one. This is their Rouge G line. I like it, but I wanna try more. And I know that since I'm such a lipstick hoarder and lover, <laughs> I'm more likely to go for the lipsticks, but that highlight, mm, that's pretty too. All right, let's talk about the things I'm definitely not getting. Now, this first one is kind of painful to me because I love this product so much. It's from ColourPop. It's their Super Shock Shadows. There is a set, and as the time of recording this right now, it's still available, and it's called Is This Real Life? And, I mean, it's beautiful. 25 Super Shock Shadows. Some are split pan. Some are tie-dye. They're all brand new shades they've never done before, and I love Super Shock Shadows. Um, here's one of the main reasons I love them. I know that there's a lot of glitter top coats out there. There's a Marc Jacobs one. There's an Hourglass, like the Scattered Light. There's also Natasha Denona. I really feel like some of the glitter, like the Ultra Glitter Super Shock shadows work just as well as a shadow top coat for $5. And you're not paying $27, $29, whatever those other ones cost. You can get a whole bunch of them for the price of one of those. And I think they have some really beautiful options. And this whole set, is $99 and it makes me go, yes, I want it. I want the whole thing. But the truth is I have so many. I have, I don't know. I think at this point, some of them have dried up and I've gotten rid of those. I might have more than 40 and I haven't been using them recently. So although I love the formula and I need to get back into using the ones I have, I just can't justify buying this many of them and sticking my finger in them just to swatch them and then being like, oh yeah, too many. They're all going to dry out before I get a chance to use them, but I think it's great. I love these, and if you don't already have a lot, this may be something you want to look into. Another lipstick product that intrigued me, but is probably on my no list, is from Huda Beauty. These are their Power Bullets, and it's basically a glitter lipstick, and I love the form of the bullet itself. It looks like it has almost like a diamond, like, like the shape of it towards the top where you would apply it to your lips almost looks like a diamond shape and it's gorgeous. But the shades that I see, there's kind of like a brick red, kind of a Barbie pink and a purple. I have enough reds that that red doesn't really call to me, but those two other colors, they're definitely not the sorts of shades that I reach for. I might be interested if they extended, and I don't know, maybe this is just for holidays, or maybe it's like Here's our little preview for holiday, and then we're gonna extend it. I don't do a lot of metallic lips, but I'd be more willing to do like a wine or a red tone metallic lip than like those pinks and purples. So that's right now, it's on my no list. All right, so I have a lot of CoverShop palettes from Smashbox. I like them, I have four. I think they're fantastic. They have a new one, it's really, really big. This is called their LA CoverShot Eye Palette. It has nine mattes seven shimmers, that's 16 shades, That's and it's only $45. So at first I was like, ooh, 
And then, you know, it really comes down to the fact that I like the ones that I have, but they are in the shades and the color stories I know I'm going to use. I have um, the Golden Hour, which is my absolute favorite. Uh, it has some warm tones, but also some purples, and it's fabulous. There is the light one. I don't know what it's called, but it's beautiful. It's very, very light, very shimmery. I use that more on a um, just a little glaze over the eyes, and I'm doing more of a no-makeup look with still makeup. <laughs> Um, and then I have the Ablaze, which I know a lot of people love. It's not my favorite. It came in a set. And then there was another cooler toned palette. I forget the name of it, but they're, I like them. I like them a lot. I think that for the price, $29, you get seven shades. I think that's fantastic. Now this one here, I could see myself using the two middle color stories, maybe even the last three, but that first one that has the really bright, bold shades in there, that teal, that kind of orchid shade and that bright orangey coral i don't see myself reaching for those so for that reason alone i don't know that i need a another cover shot palette that i'm almost never going to reach for so that's on my no list so glam glow has this new product out and it looks really interesting but i'm definitely saying no to this it's their good in bed passion fruit softening night cream and it's bright kind of a shiny red packaging it looks really beautiful and all Here's my problem. For $65, you usually only get like a 1.6, 1.7 ounces. That's really expensive. The one from um, Glow Recipe, the avocado uh, melt sleeping night pack, whatever it's called, that avocado one is only $45. And I do believe you get more than that 1.6, 1.7 ounces. So I feel like for the price point, there are better options out there. Now, if somebody sent me this or gave me this as a gift, I would like it and I would use it and I would tell you what I thought about it, but I don't feel like for the price, I'm willing to spend the money and splurge on this Glam Glow because a lot of the Glam Glow products I've tried in the past, for me, have been good, but they haven't been like out of the park fantastic. And I'm not willing to pay that $65 price point with all of my other experiences not being like, wow. I don't know, maybe you use Glam Glow and you love it and it does give you those wow results. If you've tried this, let me know. All right, so this one kind of made me go, really, but I want it, I want it so bad. But I definitely said no to this. It's from Pat McGrath. It is the new Star Glaze Blitz Trance Lipsticks. Uh, they said uh, it's a crystalline couture veil and that just sounds remarkably awesome. But just like the Huda Beauty lipsticks, I definitely know I'm not I live in a small town. I'm a stay-at-home mom. And not that you can't be a glam, fabulous stay-at-home mom, but I really don't see myself reaching for what basically is a glitter lipstick for everyday wear, especially not the gold. Maybe the Rebel Red and maybe the Flesh Fatale if I put it over some... No, see, I'm trying to talk myself into it. I've already said no, okay. <laughs> no. They are beautiful. They are gorgeous. Probably not for me. All right, this next one is, uh, kind of reminds me of a new palette that debuted recently. This is a collaboration with Sylvia Ghani. I hope I'm saying that right. It's from BH Cosmetics. And this palette, it kind of reminds me of that new TARDIS Pro palette that was very brightly colored. Um, maybe I'll put up a side-by-side -side and we'll see how similar they are. But when I saw this picture here on Trend Mood's Instagram, I was kind of like, I, it kind of reminds me, is that... And then it wasn't, it was like, hmm. So it's pretty. I don't think it's definitely something that intrigues me enough to wanna to go, yes. So my first inclination was pretty, but no, we're passing on that. And the last thing here on my list is from Urban Decay. Um, and these are more eyeshadows. <laughs> I find it easy to say no to eyeshadows these days, except for that Too Faced one. Uh, but these are, they're on the run, on the go palettes are $25 each. There's eight pans per palette. I don't know, they they just kind of look a little underwhelming. I hate to say that, but there are three tones. There's one that's in purple packaging that leans more like neutrally brown with a dark, rich aubergine in there. There's one that's kind of more in a berry and fiery orange packaging that has more of those warmer bronzy gold tones in it. And then there's one in blue packaging that definitely kind of reminds me of a mix of maybe the Naked 1 and the Naked 2 where you have some cool tone uh, colors and some warm tone neutral colors. None of these are exciting enough to make me want to go, yes. Because there have been some eyeshadow palettes recently that made me go, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And sadly, these are not them. But they are a good price point and Urban Decay does make good eyeshadow palettes, so maybe these are something that interests you. 
So that's my list. That's my first purchase or pass. Let me know, do you like videos like this? Are you interested to see the thought process behind? And I know sometimes for me, it's emotional like that, you know, Salvaje collection that's on my maybe list or uh, that Mac you know, press pan that just makes me go, oh, so pretty, it just looks beautiful. And that's how I feel sometimes. And I know it should be more than that. And sometimes it's a legitimate, this is not gonna work for me, or I think this would. Uh, but let me know below what things are coming up or maybe just recently released that you are interested in. And thank you for watching today. I'll see you again soon. Bye.